What do you think about the market, especially about the uh, stock market in the United States? Because there are some, you know, um, assumptions that it is overbought in terms of uh, Russell 2000 is going up uh, for the period over two years. S&P 500 is <laughs> as well. So it is dangerously overbought. This is such an opinion between analysts and Bank of America had released its uh, warning. So what do you think about the market? You, it, it's not I, a I prediction. Think a what, what do you I feel, think a maybe? lot of people have no clue. I think people speaking like that have no clue what they're even talking about. I think they exist in a different universe and I think their minds are polluted by politics. You know, seriously, especially in the United States, you have to look at this devoid of, 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 of a, a, an ideology, devoid of politics. It doesn't matter who the king of the jungle is here, okay? Yeah. All that I look at, all I care about is the numbers. In May of 2016, I went on a record before a number of very wealthy families that things were going to take off. We were going to have this enormous bull market. Those same factors today are present even more so, Stan. And it, it doesn't feel right in my gut. I tend to be a, a pessimist by nature. I think we all do. It's a lot more comfortable to be saying, oh, well, it's going to get really bad out here, and I'll be the one guy who sees it coming. Yes. If it does, it's going to blindside me because everything I see is super strong. I've been... Keeping data by hand, like Barron's Market Lab every weekend since the early 1980s. And you kind of get a feel for the numbers just by doing it by hand all the time and so forth. And those numbers that are the real drivers behind U.S. equities, I've never seen in a stronger state than where they are right now. Like now, okay. I've never so, seen in a stronger state. Do you that mean economic, uh, uh, sorry for interrupting you, do you mean economic numbers like data, like employment data or inflation or economic growth? All of that. By data? All, of that. all of that. Right, all of that. But okay, let's say, let's, let, you mentioned valuation, okay? so. Let's go back to valuation for a minute as, as one of these. So people talk about the Case-Shiller index. First of all, by, by PE on the S&P, we're just in the mid-range. We're, 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 we're not overvalued by PE in the S&P historically. I can call up a chart here and show you, look, we're just mid-range on this thing. Uh, but in fact, I will call up a chart because this is pretty incredible. It's gonna take a minute. It's, a yeah. gigantic Excel sheet. You have to bear with me for a second. It won't kill you, Stan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Here we go. <laughs> you said you stay up late anyhow. You have to because of the, the market hours. <laughs> so, <Yes. laughs> well, you get some more gray hair up there. Okay, so let me go to this real quickly. Uh, I have a model, and I'll call it up. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm going to take control of the screen again, okay, Stan? Yes. Okay. Sure. So let me. Where the hell is it? There we go. Okay. Let's see. 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 let to find out rather than listening to what pundits say is overvalued, undervalued, and so forth. I really was looking for a way that says, okay, for a given level of real return and a given uh, level of earnings, what is the fair value of a, an individual equity or an index at large? And I chose the S&P. So I take the S&P, and PE ratios, and by the way, I think there's another chart on here somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. It might have this on it. Well, anyhow, I had the PE ratio on it, and you could see that it was in the mid range. But if you look at the, 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 the line of the S&P with respect to earnings, okay, yeah. and the line of the S&P with respect to real returns, and they both bend, okay? And so if I take earnings squared 
and I divide that by the log of real returns plus a small constant number to keep that always positive for when real returns get negative. I end up with a, a scatter plot with a very tight fit between the S&P and that equation. Now, just by using slope intercept, I can take what the current rate of inflation is, the current 30-year constant maturity bond, and I subtract inflation to get my real return number, okay? And earnings on the S&P, and plug it into the model, slope intercept, and get this orange line. So this orange line is the S&P, based on data pre-1998, yeah. from data a year back, okay, that okay. says, for this level of earnings, for this level of real return, here's the fair value of the S&P. And you can see everything from this point forward is out of sample. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. At bear market lows, the S&P is very overvalued, okay? At bull market highs, the S&P is very undervalued. Oh, really? It, I mean, if you look at per this, this is really is a return adjusted model, okay? okay? But in the right mathematical relationship, unlike what Kay Schiller does, okay, which is, to me, appears to be some arbitrary metric, here I looked at the actual mathematical lines and made them comport to a straight line by that formulation, and by that straight line, here is where we are. So through this weekend, we're, these lines have ab actually converged. I would not look for a top to this market, okay, until the valuation number got way above the S&P number. Until then, I think it's still in a bull market by... by oh, I see that. Sorry? I see that, yeah. Yeah. I see that. So, I mean, and, 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 and this I found for valuations gives me a much clearer picture and cuts through the noise of what I hear in the news and, and so forth. Yeah, it's very straightforward and visual, right? I'll, yeah. I'll, okay, thank you.